Hey everyone, welcome back. Jim here. I hope everyone's doing well. So today it is all about quick tips number four and it's shortcut time and MuseScore. I am using the most recent version of MuseScore, by the way. Let's go. All right, so I would like to go ahead and talk about articulations. Actually, there's one thing that's kind of bugging me. I have the metronome here and everything set, but the quarter note is rather small. And if you have a big score, we always want to make sure that we're really clear so the musicians that get to perform our music or arrangements, they can see everything really well. So all I did is I double clicked and then I'm just going to highlight. And you can control or command A, or if you just want to just highlight the quarter note. So throwing this in here is a little tip. All right, so there we go. Make that nice and big. I mean, I could get bigger, but you know. Also, I'm going to throw in a secret tip later in this video, so make sure you watch the whole video. I want to add in some articulations. So that's pretty easy to do. We probably know how to add accents. If you don't, you can go to the edit menu and go to preferences, and that will share with you the shortcuts. However, today I'm going to let you know that the accent for MuseScore, we're going to go ahead and click Shift V. After accents, I don't know if I'm feeling a marcato yet in this uh, phrase, but I'm going to go ahead and put a uh, marcato on the G sharp. So the marcato is Shift O. These are the factory settings. You can change the shortcuts if you want. I would just be careful of that. All right, I don't think I'll be feeling it today with a tenuto, but a tenuto marking, just for what it's worth, is Shift N. Now let's go ahead to the next line. All right, so here's our quiz from our last video. How do we get to the next staff without using the mouse? Alt and then down. Good job. All right, I would like to add in some staccato here. I'm sensing the first three pitches. Shift arrow down and then for staccato, I'm going to go ahead and select shift and then S. There it is. So I just quickly threw in an accent, the marcato, and the tenuto, which I deleted, and then we went down to the staff and then did some staccato marking. What I'd like to do now is add another instrument. And I'm gonna press I on the keyboard, and that lights up. Here we are, we have our cello part. Uh, I'm going to use this because I wanna go ahead and just have a little doubling right now. Okay, here is the quick tip, surprise, surprise. So, uh, Windows users, if you're on a laptop, if you press F9 to get the palette, that's what happens. That doesn't look like a palette. Now, if you forget this stuff, simply go to the view, excuse me, view tab, and you can see everything here. What I'm gonna do now is find the function button, and that is FN, and usually the function button is to the lower left, next to the control key and the Windows key. So now I'm pressing FN and F9, and here comes the palette, voila, awesome. I simply wanted to show that because that could be frustrating, and we don't wanna be frustrated, we want to be creating great music. Last thing I want to show today is the repeat. I'm just going to go ahead and focus on a single bar repeat. And let's say if I have seven or so instruments, you don't want to just drag each repeat. You can go ahead and highlight that measure, control key down, and then you're going to go to your palette or the repeat palette. And I'm going to double click. And there you go. All right, there you go. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you've liked this video, simply go ahead and as they say in YouTube, smash that like button, but don't really. Um, Go ahead and like it and definitely consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Happy music making.